morning. It's Thursday, the 27th of April 2017. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, boys and girls. Did you miss me yesterday? Oh, so busy, busy, busy yesterday. I really was. And uh, I, I'm trying, I'm going to try and calm down a bit in the morning. Gustav on Tuesday night show said I'm much more hyper first thing in the morning. That's because I'm still happy to be alive, Gustav. Only just. Just kept alive by the use of modern medicine, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, good morning to uh, David Jackson, who's with us this morning. Morning, David. Uh, Ray Reynolds is looking forward to karaoke in Camden Town. We have a new karaoke, boys and girls. Tell you about it later, OK? We'll let you know about it later. Uh, can someone like the page? Until you do that, I can't see all the messages. I've tried to do it myself. Um... But if I do it myself, that doesn't seem to work. I need someone to click a like and then it comes up on my little globe icon thing in the top corner. You know, that top bit of Facebook. Thank you, Gustav. And then up all the messages come and there they are. That's it. Oh, good morning to Chris. Chris Pina Eccles. Is it Pina or Pina? Do you remember that song? Uh, if you like Pina Colada, that one. Yes. Very good. Good morning, Chris. Twice in a week. Have you got nothing else to do, dear? There must be something interesting in your sad, lonely, pathetic life to do rather than sit here watching this rubbish. Yes. Morning to Mark Cording, who's watching us on a London underground platform. Mind the gap. My oh, I love underground. I love trains. I love trains. Uh, I used to go to school. I went to the London Oratory School in Fulham. We lived in Roehampton. And I had to get the train. Well, first of all, I got a bus from Roehampton. It was a number 85. This chair has got very squeaky. Is it my fat ass that's doing this? Just a minute. God, what's happening here? Just a minute. The carpet's come up, isn't it? Oh, God. Just a second. Pull that down. Oh, it's got a... What it is, I've got a, a rug on a plastic mat on a carpet. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, yes, a rug on a plastic mat on the carpet. Now, the plastic mat is on the carpet to, to, pre to ca protect the carpet from the wheels of the chair. But it started cracking and breaking, bits of plastic everywhere. So I bought another rug on top of that, but it keeps coming up. Do you know what I mean? And there's a crease in the middle and, and the wheels on the chair get stuck on <laughs> It's not like the BBC here, is it? Now, what was I just saying? Oh, yes. So we used to get the bus, 85 bus uh, to Putney, <clears throat> Putney Bridge Station. And from there, I'd get a district line train from Putney Bridge Station to Fulham Broadway. It wasn't far at all. And I used to love these trains. Oh, and the, the most exciting part of the train to sit as a boy was near the guard where you could see him actually pushing the buttons to operate the doors. Oh, I found this very exciting. I really did. Now, did I ever push the buttons? I don't know if I asked or I don't remember now, but I used to sit there. I oh, couldn't, you know, always about to push the button. Look quickly. <laughs> I think there was a green button and a red button. He would and, do, psh, and I'd make the door noises. Did you do that, Mark? Psh, And then you get that noise on the train, wouldn't you, sometimes when it's sitting there? Which apparently is some sort of air compressor, as told to me by Paul Knight, who is an underground train driver. Do they still do that? Oh, it's all autumn. oh you've got to push a button now, haven't you? Don't you push a button? I had to push a button the other day when I was uh, on my train journey into and out of London, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I didn't tell you about that the other day, did I? I'll tell you about it in a minute. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning to David Jackson. Good morning, David. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, Gustav says, morning, lovey. Always good to see you looking so fresh. Obviously, you've taken your powders and had a good purge. The satisfaction is written across your face. You're not far wrong, Gustav. You're not far. Maybe we should start the uh, programme in future. I could install another and yet another camera into the little boys' room. And we could start we could start the show off with a purge so that you, you know, because I know people worry a little bit about my tummy and my IBS problem. Yes, I know people worry. And you're one of them, aren't you? And, you know, to see me purging myself, I mean, that might be, oh, he's okay this morning. Do you know what I mean? Because I think you're worrying. 
I think you're worrying, lovey. And you. And you. You're worrying a little bit. No need to worry, dear. Happy. Happy. Look, happy. Happy. New jobs coming in. Oh, marvellous, dear. Excitement. I get very excited and also, believe it or not, very nervous when a new job is about to start. I shall tell you about that throughout the course of the show, boys and girls. Uh, good morning to Adam. We are now on air. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Oh, what's that come up on my screen? Oh, it's a new Skype. Oh, we won't, in, won't install that yet. I'll wait till after the show for that. Is, it, is anyone try, is there a new Skype? Looks like there's a new Skype there. Um, Ray Reynolds says Lambeth Bridge. Lambeth Bridge what? Now, why have you said Lambeth Bridge? I'm not quite sure about that, lovey. Please, please inform me a little bit more. And good morning to Nathan. Morning, Nathan. He was hoping for a show last night. I think it was you, wasn't it, Nathan? Hoping for a little show last night. But we're doing my quiz last night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. Wonderful little quiz last night. Nice. I think we had six teams, which is still a bit quiet at the moment. But it's better than it has been. Uh, six teams last night. And... Um, the journey, oh, the, the traffic seems to have got bad again in the last couple of weeks for some reason. Anyone else notice that through London? I don't know why. No reason for it, really. It's not like it's coming up to Christmas or anything like that, but the traffic's got bad. So that took me about an hour and 50 minutes to get to work last night. Um, uh, I did the quiz and that was all lovely. Um, the manageress, Ashley, is leaving, unfortunately, on Tuesday next week. So um, I think the, the guy who's in there, I can't remember his name now, he's a wonderful personality. We've got a new bloke in there now. And he's, got, he's not miserable, you know. Some of these ma managers are so bloody miserable. They really are. And the only thing they're concerned about, they keep going on about how much money they want. Oh, we need to take this, we need to take that. Not this, not this one. The good ones don't do that. I mean, how many times do you have to tell people it's not all about the money? You've got to have a bit of a personality in front of you. And he's certainly got one. So um, that's quite nice. I don't know if it's him taking over or someone else, actually. But I was really disappointed that Ashley is leaving. But she's got to leave to kind of get up the ladder. Do you know what I mean? I think she wants to come back there deep in. But she's got to do um, food... Uh, F you know, food in pub. She's got to do food in pubs. Apparently, she she told me she's a little bit weak on that. She's got to learn that food in pubs and things. So she has to leave to go somewhere else, um, and then to to go up that and come back again. You often find that people have to do that. So uh, very disappointed. And good luck to Ashley. No doubt we will work together as at some point. I expect. And she get married this year in September to her lover Gareth. Oh, they are soulmates. Isn't it nice when they're soulmates? And you can see people who should be together and those perhaps who can't. Usually two celebrities together. And you look at them and think, no, you're the wrong people together, don't you? Hmm? Um, oh. Did you hear that? That means there's someone at my door. Let me turn it off so it doesn't interrupt uh, our wonderful show this morning. Now, let me just check. I think something's going wrong here. Um, oh, but, gang, you need to go out and get yourself a copy of the Metro paper. Mark, if you're still with us, you should be able to pick one of these up uh, from your tube station because in this morning's Super Soraway Metro paper, which, incidentally, the, the Metro is the one that I steal from our local train station to put down on the floor for Katie the Cat. Yes, for when she messes on the floor. Although she hasn't messed since Sunday. No, what I've been doing, whenever I go down into the kitchen, I pick her up and put her outside. And you watch her, she walks around and she has a little wee or a little poo. She does. And then she, then I let her back in again. She's, I'm trying to get into her head. When I put her outside, it's time to go. I mean, maybe I should demonstrate that to her. What do you think? Does that work? You know, it's like showing, you know, like like a child. You know, you have to show them what to do. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. And then they copy you. Is it the same with cats? You know, if I was to go outside in my garden on all fours and defecate in the middle of my lawn, would the cat learn that's how she has to do it? But I, actually, I don't think she does need to do that because she's doing it herself at the moment. And it's the Metro. They got stacks and stacks of them up at the train station. So I go and nick about 20 copies and put them on the kitchen floor, just in case she makes a mess. I've actually got enough at the moment. But uh, this morning, I doubt very much there'll be any, any this morning. You know what people are like when there's something free going? Oh, God's sake, they're dreadful, dear. They're kicking, hitting each other and, and smashing each other in the back, you know, for the sake of a bag of Walker's Crisps. Because that's what you will get today 
if you get your copy of the Metro, a free packet of Walker's Crisps. Yes! Yum, yum, yum! Cheese and onion! We love it! We love the cheese and onion crisps. I bet it won't be a big packet. I bet it won't be the pound packets or even the grab size packets. It'll be the normal packets. You know, they're about half an inch square. What do you mean, what's an inch? Don't be so Are you English or not? Blooming cheek, what's an inch? What's that in centimetres? I don't know what a centimetre is, dear. That tiny little thing. I mean, they're pathetic centimetres, aren't they? You think it's another piece of patheticness sent over by the Europeans. That's what it is, dear. Little, like, have you seen a, a pathetic, look, you know, a little pathetic centimetre? Or you can have a big British inch. Which would you rather have? Six British inches or 15 tiny little pathetic centimetres? Exactly. Exactly. So those are available this morning. With your copy of Metro, you get a free packet of Walker's Crisps. Yes, thank you. Yum, yum, yum. We'll have some of that. Mmm. Just a quick thank you to everyone for those of you sharing today's programme on your walls. This is very much appreciated. And I speak unanimously in that. Don't forget those crisps. Oh, by the way, if you don't eat crisps, do you mind getting yourself a copy of the Metro paper and um, uh, 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 perhaps I can have the crisps from you. Is, it, it, would that be OK? Could you do that for me, lovies? Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to... Oh, Andrew McHardy says, what is this show? I don't know. If you watch a bit longer, you might work it out, dear. It's a bloke talking in a studio about nothing. That's it. All right. Welcome along. Don't suppose you'll be staying long, but never mind. Thanks for popping in anyway. Um, let's see. Oh, blimey. There's a lot of messages here, aren't they? Uh, gosh. I don't think they were coming up a minute ago. There we are. Chris. There's Chris. Chris. Uh, Kevin is on his new laptop. Have you got a new laptop? Have you? I change mine every couple of years. Yeah, because I'm using it all the time. And I usually give the other one away to someone. Uh, good morning to Carmel Ridgely, who I went to primary school with. Good morning, Carmel. How are you? Tony Power is there. Good morning, Tony. Tony writes songs for the Eurovision. Tony, I, I have to tell you, I downloaded the Eurovision CD at 15, 15 quid. Jeez, that's gone up a bit, isn't it? 15 quid, I downloaded the double Eurovision CD, Tony, uh, and I had it on in a car, and I've got to say, how disappointing. Oh, my God, the songs are all so dreary. Now, I think there's one that I quite liked called Keep the Faith. Is that the right title? I quite like that. That's quite a haunting ballad, but they're just so dreary and boring. What happened to the likes of Save Your Kisses For Me and Come Closer, Come Closer, My Heart Goes Boom Bang A Bang, Boom Bang A Bang, Love In My Ear, Boom Bang A Bang, Boom Bang A Bang, You Are A Queer. You know, what's happened to all those wonderful, wonderful songs? Oh, it's so dreary. My advice to you, boys and girls, don't buy the Eurovision CD. It's awful. So disappointing. And I've never, ever said that about the Eurovision, uh, Eurovision show. You get odds. You get bad songs. You get good songs. These, this one's not necessarily bad or good. It's just dreary. Miserable. Miserable, miserable songs. No doubt they'll be, they'll be sung by very good-looking people with wind machines in front of them blowing the hair, although that won't work in my case, as you can well see. Huh? Disappointed, Tony. Our song, no chance. Absolutely no chance at all. Absolutely no chance at all. Not only do they all hate us anyway. <laughs> Who's going to vote for us? No, of course they're not. They want to keep their little centimetres, don't they? Pathetic sentiment. Who's going to vote for the Great British Six-Incher? No one. No one's going to vote for the Great British Six-Incher. But apart from the fact that they hate us, the song is dreadful. Absolutely ghastly. I mean, maybe a different arrangement of it, but I just don't go for songs where they've taken all the orchestra away and just left with a few instruments, like a bloke playing a recorder and a triangle, something like that. Did you play the triangle at school, Tony? I was, <laughs> my sister was the only person who managed to play the triangle out of tune. How do you do that? God's sake. 
Uh, Gustav says, you don't get James O'Brien sorting out a bit of dodgy old rug on LBC. Well, they, <laughs> they've got um, LBC, please, darling. They've got carpet tiles. I mean, you think a rug's bad. Carpet tiles. Do. Mind you, you've probably got that in your house, haven't you, Gustav? Have you got carpet tiles, have you, darling? Hey, eh? You know, when you accidentally leak onto a tile, you just shove it in the dish, in, in, in the washing machine, do you? It's so easy. It's so easy. It's, I didn't know that. Gustav's got carpet tiles. Well, there's something we learn every day. Um, uh, Kevin says, do you have a twin? No, but I do have someone that looks very much like me. Uh, his name is Keith George. Look him up. He's in my friends list. Keith George, or you can look up the Boy George Experience. Not Boy George, the Boy George Experience. Okay, that's that's the whole title. Have a look at his photos and you'll see he looks very much like me. And we are often mistaken for each other. That's true, that is, Kevin. Uh, Chris says, you sound like Star Trek Next Generation with those door sounds. Uh, no, no, incorrect, Chris. The, the Star Trek Next Generation door sounds would be... The underground door noises are... Much slower. You clearly don't know the different doors, do you, Chris? Pay full attention to the doors on your train. The ones that I went on the other day, Southwest trains, they, remember, they come outwards. They go, they go like... And they're quite quiet. You barely notice them. Just a quick... Just a quick... Similar. Similar to the Star Trek ones. The old underground trains are the one, are the, they were the best ones, the really noisy ones, you know. And as a schoolboy, you'd put, you know, you know the runner at the bottom, you'd put something in it to see if it stopped the door closing it, and it never did. It never did, very well designed. Proper trains on the district line. I don't know what they're like now, they're probably, uh, do you push a button on the, uh, do you know it's years since I went on an underground train, years. It really is. Um, Tracy Clifford uh, is my niece. She's about to drop a baby. Quite <laughs> the nurse. Uh, that's true. That is my my niece. That is Tracy Clifford on there. She's about. In fact, the midwife said to her <laughs> the other day, last week, she said to her that baby is so low down that I'm surprised its head's not hang not hanging out. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Now, I have asked my niece if she minds me during a, doing a show um, while she's actually having the baby with me in front of her. Now, I didn't want to embarrass her. There wouldn't be any close-ups or anything like that. Kind of just her in the background as a sort of, you know, as, as sort of something going on. You know, like they have in the BBC newsroom with all those people pretending to work, don't they? I don't think they're doing anything. I honestly don't. I think they're random people from the street that they get into the studio and say, OK, well, we're going on air at 12 o'clock. Um, can you just stand out and just type away on a keyboard and pretend you're doing something? I don't think they're doing anything at all there. I honestly don't. Anyway, I had this idea that when my niece gets taken into hospital to have her third baby, which is, I mean, this is, it is massive. There must be about 10 of them in there, I'm telling you that now. There's got to be 10 of them waiting to come out. And like the midwife says, any lower... Well, she's not. She's surprised the head is not hanging out at the moment. It's so low, right? But my idea was that I, she lets me know, or, or her husband, Ben, lets me know. And then I go to the hospital, set up my camera with, with the bed and my, my niece laying down behind me, having the baby while I'm still do, while I'm doing like a, a, a show like it is now, but not actually referring to her behind you. I think that'd be an excellent idea, don't you? It gives some interest to the show, wouldn't it? Rather than me just rabbing it on for hours on end. What do you think of that idea? Are you liking that idea? She doesn't seem too keen on that at the moment, but I think she might come round at some point. I'm hoping she does. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning to David Anthony. We're still in morning, aren't we? Morning, David. Uh, A.D. James, excellent karaoke singer is with us. Um, Kevin says I'm echoing. Am I? Am I echoing to anyone else? Look, this is echo. This is echo. <laughs> ah! That is not echo. Am I echoing to anyone else or is it just him? Tony says, your door, door opening sounds sounds like Pat Butcher taking a deep breath after inhaling a fag. <laughs> 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 we used to have a, a wonderful, 
I think she was um, a, a secretary. Uh, her name was Joan. When I used to work at the Black Cap, uh, when it was Mitchells and Butler's, and what was it before that? Bass Taverns. Or was it Bass Taverns? Anyway, uh, we ha used to have Joan at head office and she used to smoke a lot. She's a lovely lady. She's still with us. She's a lovely lady. And she would answer the phone. You'd ring up. And you'd go, <coughs> Joan from head office, can I help you? And you know she just had another 10 fags. <laughs> Morning. Um, Ray Reynolds says it's behind you. Oh, yes. Lambeth Bridge. You mean that? You mean that Lambeth Bridge? Yes. Now, Ray, if you'd have written to me, the picture behind you is Lambeth Bridge, I would have understood that. But you just said Lambeth Bridge. I mean, how do I know what that means? Oh, phone's ringing. Well, a bit late, isn't it now? We're on air now. Too late, my friend. He said he was going to ring back in 10 minutes. Actually, AD, that's Rodney ringing me. Look, Rodney Hammersmith reading me, ringing me. He said, I'll ring back in 10 minutes. That was at nine o'clock. Don't think so. We're on air now, love. We're online, not quite on air. Well, we are on air. Some of the, I'm sure some of the internet signals are bounced around on a satellite or something like that. Uh, Tweety Charlotte says, the painting behind you is lovely. Very English. Yes, it's an oil painting, so it's like got raised bits on it. That was uh, painted by uh, someone in Poland. Now, what's his name? Hang on. It's a, I can't quite read the signature. You can never read anyone's signatures, can you? Have you noticed that? Some people are really bad signatures. Shall I do... No, I won't do mine, because you might copy it. You might copy my signature and start writing it on cheques and claiming money from me, dear. I'll have a bit of money next year. Oh, looking forward to that. Thank you, because I went to see the pensions people yesterday. Very good news, very good news. Anyway, um, yes, that was painted, um, and I got it on eBay. Uh, Tweety, I got that on eBay for 30 quid. It's good, isn't it? You can, you no need to go to galleries and spend hundreds of pounds on pictures. Go on eBay and what you'll find on there is young, well, not necessarily young, you'll find artists who are trying to, you know, make something uh, and they put their pictures on eBay and you make a bid and you might get it, you might not. Or you can get one of those buy now things. And they're like 20, 30 quid, some of these pictures. Very good value. And also you're helping the artist as well. Although you probably wouldn't buy a picture if you didn't like it. And I saw that and I thought that's really nice. Um, if anything, I wish it was a little bit more colourful, you know. It's a bit like black and white, isn't it? But um, is that straight? There we are. But it is nice. You've got Big Ben and Lambeth Bridge as Ray Reynolds uh, corrects me there. We like correction. Uh, AD says, we remember a particularly good manager. Oh, yes, indeed, we do. We do. Chris says, it's all about the money. Jesse J was wrong and so are you. It's not all about the money. Chris. Well, it's not all about the money for me. I love doing my job. I really do. When I went to see the pensions bloke yesterday, he said, when are you thinking of retiring? I said, I'm not. <laughs> why? Why would, I want to, why would I want to stop going out and talking to people? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Carmel. <laughs> Kevin is laughing this morning. Good morning to James Clark. Are you the nat new Gary Lineker? Don't be silly, James. Gary Lineker sits there and he has about three crisps out of that. Probably frightened of putting in any weight. I have the one pound bags. Oh, look, so much fun. And, you know, eating teas and onion crisps and chocolate is so much easier than trying to chat someone up in a pub, isn't it? You know, you just open the crisps and eat. And if you don't want them, you chuck them away. This is the thing. You know, if you open the crisps, so you get the pound bag. Now, they are quite large. You get halfway through, oh, don't want any more. You just chuck it away. That bag of crisps doesn't then jump out of the waste paper basket and start to, oh, please stay with me. Please stay with me. Please give me another chance. No, it just stays in the bin. So much better than a relationship. Bags of Walkers, cheese and onion crisps. Someone needs to contact Walkers and tell them to sponsor this programme. I would gladly sit here for the advert so I could do the show. It would start with me eating a bag of crisps. Then I would do the show. And then I'd say goodbye. Then I'd eat another bag of Walker's crisps. And then we'd play the closing video. How does that sound? Is that a product placement? That's what it is. Product placement. I've just found my Harrods card. Look what I found. Look, here's a really old picture of me. You ready for this? Look, 
I used to... I didn't work at Harrods. Look at that. Look how good looking and delicious I am there. Look. Obviously not as much as now, but I was then. I used to work at a radio station. I was on Liberty Radio in London. Uh, it was on medium wave in uh, 1999 to 2000. And I did the overnight show, 2 till 6.30 in the morning. Got away with murder on there. Oh, because radio stations are very particular about what you say. Night time, they're not bothered. I used, to, I used to give things away and everything. And the manager wrote to me, please stop giving things away. Why? <laughs> it was just CDs. I used to go out and buy CDs. We'd have a little competition and give a CD away or something like that. Yes, my friend David Rosen. Now, he was a big time DJ in London. Same as I was. I was as well at one point. Not now, not now. I, I've had that. That part of my life has got is actually about to disappear completely, I think, to be honest. Yes, more about that tomorrow, perhaps. Um, but yes, I, I, had, um, uh, I, I worked in some very big clubs when I was DJing in London. That would be in the 90s and um, up to about 2005. Then I came out of the big clubs. And uh, David Rosen worked uh, in clubs as well. And we both had these jobs at Liberty Radio in London. And we used to do the overnight show. We would share it. So I think I did, I think I did four nights and he did three or the other way around. Doesn't matter. And he used to do competitions as well. And what he did, he took in like a, like a child's roulette wheel. And he'd say, right, if you get, if you get a black, <laughs> people would ring in and answer a question. And he'd say, OK, I'm going to put the ball in the machine now. If it lands on black, you'll win a holiday for two in Barbados. If it lands on green, you'll win a bottle of wine. If it lands on red you'll win a CD of your choice. No, it wasn't obvious. He had to say, same. you win a CD. And he'd say, right, you ready? Yep, OK, I'm ready. Right, let's do it. And he put the ball in and it would always land on the black or the red. What was it now? Uh, anyway, no one ever won the holiday because it wasn't one. <laughs> you probably get dumb for that now. People have got no sense of humour, have they? They really haven't. Uh, Rod is off. He's going to catch us all later on the recording. See you, Rod. Thank you. Um, we are all unanimous, Chris. I am unanimous in everything. Good morning. Uh, good morning to Ben Parker, who says, bring back Cloda and there was a jack in the box. Da, 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 da. Ben, it, just go online and have a listen to some of the songs this year. They're ghastly. They are so dreary and boring. They really are awful. But do listen to the one, Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith, I think it's called. And that one's not too bad at all, all right? Uh, Tony says, on the subject of the Eurovision CD, he agreed. Now, I'm surprised you're agreeing with me, Tony, here. I thought you'd, um, I hope, I thought you'd kind of hold the Eurovision flag up. Tony says, they are very poor, Chris. Eurovision has gone in a different direction. My tip this year is an old school song called Breathlessly from Malta. It's mad. I don't think I've got to that one yet, Tony. I, I'm not sure what order they're playing out on my um on my download, but I'm sure I haven't got to that one. Do you know the one Keep the Faith, though, Tony? That was quite nice. It's got a really... Pa oh, sod it. I'll play a bit. Hang on a minute. Let's see if we can play you just a bit. I'll have to talk over it, because if if it's picked up on the um automatic thing, they'll cut the show off. Hang on. What is it? Uh... Keep the faith. I think it's keep the... Oh, hang on. Faith Eurovision. It's, the beginning of it is fantastic. Here it is. That's it there. Oh, it's oh, it's from Georgia. Is that part, Was that the one that part, part of Russia, Georgia, isn't it? Is it Georgia, part of Russia? Anyway, here it is. Let's have a little listen. Oh, hang on. They're playing a blooming advert now, aren't they? Oh, dear. Just listen to the beginning of it. It's absolutely it's haunting. It really is. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Can you hear that all right? Isn't it nice? I can't play any more of it because because they cut us off on the Facebook with a copyright thing. But do have a listen to that. Keep if you type in "Keep the Faith Eurovision," you'll find that the, the beginning of it is just so haunting. It really is. Uh, so thank you, Tony, for that. I'll have a listen to that other one as well. Uh, Ray Reynolds says the new Steps single is good. And you know, I can't remember it now. I I did quite like Steps. Yeah. The new step single was good and reminds me of good times when I was at the DJ at Walthamstow Central Station. Was that before you burnt it down, Ray? Were you a part owner there trying to get the insurance, lovey? 
Chris says, you look nothing like Keith George. You're far prettier. I think so as well, lovey. I do think so as well. Um, thank you. Tony says there's no echo, so that must be your end. Uh, if you get an echo, just close your browser, open it again, and I'm sure it will disappear, all right? Um, <laughs> thank you, Ben. Ray also says, before BBC One Colour, there was a live show called Your Life in Their Hands. I remember that with a live operation show and the, with all the blood and the glory. It got a huge audience. I remember that. Cool. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Your Life in Their Hands. They did live operations on the telly. Did anyone die? Did anyone die at all? <laughs> Dennis Granger said, where is David Rosen nowadays? Uh, David drives a minicab and he's very happy. He's got a family. And funnily enough, in June, I'm going to his son's bar mitzvah. Is that 16 years old, bar mitzvahs? Or is it, I, no, I think it's 13. Is it 13? I think bar mitzvahs are 13. I'm going to his son's bar mitzvah in June. I've been invited to that. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, I haven't been to a bar mitzvah in this country. However, when I went on holiday to Israel a couple of years ago, I went to the, oh, damn, I, could, I never remember what it is, the praying wall, the wall that they all go, the, the Jewish people all go to pray at. And what they do is they write little prayers and they poke them in the wall, these little bits of paper with, with, with prayers and things on them. Uh, and they, they had lots of mitzvahs there. But that, that was like, it was a bit like... Um, uh, how can I how can I explain that? It it what it, it, it was... There was a lot of people doing it. I was going to say it's like a conveyor belt, but it's not. There's no rushing. You know, you're not rushed to do it. But there's lots of young boys waiting and they're carrying this this big um, thing, like a, a protection thing. And inside that is is their holy book, like the Bible. Oh, damn. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, hang on a minute. Let me look it up for you. Jewish book. Jewish book. I, I, as soon as I see the name, I'll remember it. Jewish book. What? Oh, does it say Jewish book week? <laughs> uh, what is the Jewish book? What is the Jewish book? Begin with. Does it begin with M by any chance? Books. Hebrew. Hellenist. Jude. Judaism. Uh, Jewish book. Oh, it's not there now. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. The Hebrew. The tank. Tangak. T T Talmud? So, can someone tell me what that is? What's that Jewish book? The Torah. That's it. Thank you, Ben. The Torah. Uh, the Jewish book, the Torah. And it's carried in this big protective thing. And, I mean, it is big and looks heavy. And these these young boys, are having, it's so big they have trouble carrying it. And they the, the, the ladies will all be in... They're, they're kind of all... This, this is in... Um, in 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 Israel, okay. So the ladies are kind of behind. They're not unseen, but they're like standing on a balcony. So they're there, and all the men are down by the wailing wall, and the boy carries the Torah in this protective thing that that's got a name for it as well, but I can't remember what it is. Um, and they carry it past the wall, and then they go inside into like a, a religious place and some sort of. A little ceremony happens there and when they come out they are considered a man i believe that's that's what happens there all right so uh, and it's very good it's fantastic and there's loads of them at the wailing a uh, wailing wall that's it there's loads of them there coming through you know one not all together they one at a time and they do their thing and then another one comes and it's all very great and happy it's all very happy and they come out because when they come out, they are now considered a man and people are cheering and clapping. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But I've not been to one in this country. So I'm going to David Rosen's son's bar mitzvah uh, in June and I'm very much looking forward to that. Do you take them presents? Do you take gifts? Do you, I don't know if you take gifts or, or give money or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, good morning to... Um, Good morning to William Brown in Sydney. Good morning, uh, William. Hope you're well. I'm glad you love the show, William. I do see all your little videos as well. Wonderful little thing. Because William, he does proper radio. Oh, yes. Not like me, dear. Internet radio. He does proper radio. And television, dear. Television he does. Adam's with us. Good morning, Adam, the plumber. Back again. He lost his connection. Well, pay the bill, Adam, dear. Pay the bill. Louise and Carrot are with us. Uh, Tony... 
Ah, uh, Tony says I'll get 250 to 1 if I put some money on the song I like. Well, that's worth doing then. I might put a tenner on. I'm going to put a tenner on that song. That would be odds of like two and a half thousand pounds if it wins. I do like that song, Tony. I might do that. Thank you. Uh, Dennis Granger says, good to hear. He's still got one of my CDs he borrowed when Dave Duke died many years ago. Was, was, didn't Dave Duke have a burger van outside trade? Was it Dave Duke who had that? One of the Daves had a burger van outside trade. You know, turn rolls. But it didn't... Ju it was hilarious. I can't say too much. But he didn't just sell burgers, did he? <laughs> Always wondered why there was such a long queue at that back. <laughs> dear, dear. Oh, gosh. Well, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? Um, good. Well, let me tell you uh, about my little trip that I had on Tuesday. Tuesday, I had to pop into London to have a little check-up at the hospital. Everything's all right there. Uh, the journey in was so easy. Now, generally, if I've got an appointment uh, at, at, at Hampstead, then it is... Um, uh, I, I do take a train. It's so much easier. And it was even more easier this time. I must have just had the timing right. I literally got to Bracknell train station where I live. I, I cycled to the train station from my house. So I cycled up there, um, got the, uh, uh, bought the ticket, a bit £21.50. You know, to go in and out of London. Jeez, that's so much money, isn't it? Although it's cheaper than buying the blooming congestion charge now. By the time you bought parking and all that business, but it's so relaxing. I got so I got the ticket, went through the station, the train arrived, walked onto the train, sat there, got myself comfortable, you know, opens my book. I'm reading a book at the moment. Now, where's that? I bought that in. <clears throat> this is the new book I'm reading. I say new. I've got quite far through it already. Look, there's my little little thing. See, I've done that already. And um, I've started reading. I've started reading and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and I've never found the patience to read. I don't know why, but I, I, I would read a book and get so far, and, you know, that far. And then I'd see that as just pages and not actually story. And I'd just put it aside. I wouldn't read it anymore. But, um, you know, I run, read another book recently, which someone can have if you want. I've finished with that book now um, about a boy who starts a radio station. If you want that book, then just um, ask me for it and I'll give it to you next time I see you. First come, first serve. And uh, this Life in a Fishbowl I'm reading now. Now, this is, it sounds a bit morbid, but it's quite funny in places as well. It's about this bloke and he goes, um, he keeps getting headaches and they find out he's got a brain tumour that's eating his memories. Yeah. And it starts telling you. You know, and it might say something like, um, oh, yes. And he was seeing his little girl take her first bite of ice cream and then the memory vanished as the tumour ate it. It's a bit like that. Uh, but he he put his life, because he's worried about his family, and he's put his life for sale on eBay. So it go to the highest bidder, bidder and he tells the win he will he, the winner can do whatever they like with his life, whatever they like. And the uh, the, the furthest I've got now, eBay have taken it off because because that's they're not allowed to sell people's lives basically. Uh, but some a TV bloke has got in contact with him and offered them five million pounds if they can install cameras and microphones all over the house and basically watch him die. And that's that's the book. So I've got so far, so far. And it's very good. It's called Life. And if you like reading Life in a Fishbowl by Len Vlahos. And I paid, um, I think, eight pounds, was it? I paid eight pounds in Waterstones. We have a Waterstones here in Bracknell. So I bought that. That's what I'm reading at the moment. So I'm reading that on the train. Um, and also looking out the window because uh, the train journey through from Bracknell to London is beautiful. A lot of countryside, trees, houses, and as you go in, you can see London coming because it starts getting more and more built up. Sunningdale's really nice. As you go through Sunningdale, Egham, um, Virginia Water. Oh, beautiful. You'd never be able to afford a house there. Um, <clears throat> so coming through there, got off at Richmond Station. I walked, you could walk just across the platform. The next the next train is waiting to take me, The Silver, I think it's the Silverlink train, all the way to Hampstead Heath. Got on the train there, got to Hampstead Heath, got off, got into the hospital, got seen within five minutes, um, came back out again, got on the platform. Five minutes later, the train arrived again. 
It, it took me, I think, an hour and 25 minutes to get into London. Right from door to door, almost. Fantastic. You know, and while you're sitting there on the train, you haven't got to worry about anything. You know, someone cutting you up, on and off the brake and accelerator, worrying about this, that and the other on the road. You haven't got to do it. You just sit on the train and relax. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Got back on the train uh, almost instantly at Hampstead Heath. Got back to Richmond. Now, at Richmond, I stop. I stop at Richmond. There's a pasty place there, the, the Cornish Pasty Company. Now, they're not cheap there. <clears throat> You're spending about seven pounds for two pasties and a cup of tea. I had a cheese and onion pasty and a vegetable pasty and a cup of tea. Then I walked around the platform and uh, I think it was about a 10 minute wait this time. And I got the train to Bracknell. Well, I left my house at a quarter to 10. I think it was a quarter, was it a quarter to half past nine. <clears throat> I left my house at half past nine. I walked back in here at half past two. Not bad, is it? So that was my change early. But on the way home, on the on the bit Hampstead, Hampstead Heath to, to Richmond, there was an incident took place. Oh, yes. I suddenly heard that. Well, there I was reading my book. I just heard this noise. Beep, beep, beep. And someone, this, this woman had pushed this loudspeaker thing attached to a post. Oh, hello. Um, is that the driver or the guard? Yes, um, someone has said something to my husband. I'd like you to come and have a word with him, please. And it was all a bit like that. And, of course, you know, as soon as we hear... Everyone's looking up there, looking around. You know, what's happening on here? We're looking around, trying to see what's going on. And, yeah, there's this young, youngish girl and a very good-looking thin husband standing there trying to talk to this thing. Of course, the, but the driver appeared not to be able to hear them. I don't know ignoring them. Anyway, so she went down to the front and started banging on the door because I, I sit near the front. So can, can I just blow my nose? Just a moment, dear. A minute. <coughs> Sorry, I, I'm quite loud with my nose. Are you loud with your nose blowing? Let's do it together. <coughs> yeah, are you loud with your nose blowing? Hmm. <clears throat> so... They've knocked on the door. This, this driver's come out and he's come out. And they've gone... No, they're, they're now in, 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 the, in the driver's bit, at which point the train has stopped. The train has stopped now. And the lady opposite me, middle-aged lady sitting opposite me, looked up and I looked at her. I said, did you hear any of that going on? She said, no. I said, well, all I could hear was her saying, oh, I want to report someone. Where did they come from? And she said, I think they were talking to that bloke over there. And over there was, was, a, was a bloke just sitting there, you know, minding his own business with his headphones on, reading a paper. But, uh, and, and I started a conversation with this woman. She said, well, I hope I'm not going to be late. And we started talking about things, you know, as you do on the train. Not the young people. Oh, no, no, no. Not the young people. Perish the thought that one of the young people would speak to someone else. Oh, no. Heads down, looking at mobile phones, earphones on, completely oblivious to anything going on around them in their own tiny little boring worlds. Playing the latest computer game, Super Mario. Do 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 and then, so the train stopped for a couple of minutes, like, you know, mid-station. And then it started moving off slowly again, got into the station and it stopped. Um, and then uh, uh, this, this, this young man and woman came back down, at which point uh, a, 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 a train employee got on, got on, got on. Uh, come through the doors and, and they said, which one is it? That bloke over there. So this bloke's sitting there all quietly. What happened? He said something rude to my husband. Well, you know, what? And it, it, it was all over very quickly. I said, well, uh, are you just going to sit there then? And the bloke said, yes. And what did he say? He said, nothing. And I said to him, well, did you hear anything? No, none of us heard anything. I'm sure it was the young girl creating trouble. I think, I'm sure that's what it was. I don't think anything actually happened. Anyway, so he said, well, right, will you sit down there? You go back down there. Just stay there. Where are you getting off? Next stop. OK, well, just stay down there. You stay down there and we'll carry on the train journey now because we're holding up the train. Of course, you're not just holding up that train. <clears throat> All the trains behind it would have to stop. And I don't think they like that. I certainly don't like it. And that basically, that was it. Very disappointing. No fight or anything. 
How disappointing was that? I thought, oh, how exciting. There's going to be a fight now. I had my camera ready, ready to show it on the show and everything, but nothing. Nothing at all. Very disappointing. So that was the bit of excitement on the train. And then on the other train going from Richmond to Bracknell, we got to the station and the doors wouldn't open. So excited. And I, I swear the driver and the guard were having a row over the speakers. We could all hear it. So these doors are not opening and then the driver, I think the, uh, the guard or the driver came on and said, we're very sorry, there's a bit of a technical issue with the doors at the moment. Uh, please hold on, we'll get them open as soon as possible. So there's people now trying to get on the train and people trying to get, I'm loving it. Oh, the excitement, I'm loving it. People trying to get out, you know, because the doors don't open. And uh, th then I heard the driver say, why don't you try one of the others? But it was the tone of voice. Why don't you try one of the others? Uh, message to the guard. Why don't you try one of the others? At which point the guard replied, this is on the speakers, uh, I am trying one of the others, please bear with me. He was clearly annoyed. Perhaps they're not friends. <laughs> sometimes you have to work with people that aren't friends. It can be very difficult sometimes. It really can. Oh, I could give you a list of people that are... No, it doesn't matter, I better not. Um... Uh, and then I went on my journey and we got back home. And it was very, very pleasant journey. Very, very pleasant journey indeed. And the, the excitement of things happening on the train as well. So there we are. Um, let's have a look. Ah, Dennis says Dave was a bouncer. Okay, Dave was a bouncer. Tony says, uh, Chris, they all want Italy to win, but check out the English lyrics to that song. They are simply awful. They make no sense at all. Probably the most stupid set of lyrics I have ever heard. And nobody pays attention to the song lyrics either. Check it out and you'll be stunned at what you read. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Okay, we'll have a little listen to that. So there we are. Um, Check out the Italian Eurovision song as well as the one I told you. So keep the faith. That's the one I really like at the moment, although I haven't heard them all. And the Italy song, the meaning of it, the meaning of it is quite interesting. Thank you very much, Tony. Much appreciated. Good morning to uh, Joe. Did I see the phone ring then? Oh, Adam, did you try and call in? Sorry, Adam. You can call in now if you want to, Adam the Plumber. Um, yes, Joey Millen is uh, with us as well this morning. So good morning to Joey. Now, um... Let me tell you, how are we doing on time? Oh, it's five past 12, isn't it? Already, where's the time go? I don't know where the time goes. Uh, gonna tell you about a brand new karaoke night, boys and girls. Now, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, I'll be hosting karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Oh, there's Adam the Plumber now. Right, I just, um, I've got you there, Adam. If you just hold on a second, mate, all right? Yep. All right. So at the Camden Eye in Camden. Now, it's very, very, very close to Camden, uh, Camden Town Tube Station. And it's right on a junction. The times of this are 8 p.m. till 11 p.m. This is the first one. But then there will be a two week gap. We just wanted to try this out to see that it all works. Everything. Everything has to work. You know, equipment, sound. People have to come. You know, if no one comes then it doesn't happen anymore. But so this week we've got we've got Camden Town uh, uh, karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town, 8 p.m. till 11 p.m. So not too late for you to get up for work the next morning. Free entry, and that's this coming Sunday, the 30th of April. So I do hope some of you can uh, uh, come down there. The pub is actually run by someone I worked for before in Belushi's. Um, I worked at several of the Belushi's uh, bars in London and they are I just had such a wonderful time in there in those places so I'm hoping that the atmosphere we create will be similar to that so this Sunday karaoke at the Camden Eye Camden Town from 8 p.m till 11 p.m all right good morning to Adam the plumber on line 6331 good morning Adam Good morning, Chris Fried, an international DJ of several years. Thanks for calling in to the United Kingdom Talk television complex. Here, there in Royal Berkshire. What's new with you today, sir? Uh, just to phone in to give you give you a review of the Slimming World weekly update. Oh, yes. Let me just fill in people who are new to the show. There's a m millions of people joining us new every day now, which is mainly <laughs> thanks to people sharing the show. I'm sure Indeed. it is, thanks to people sharing the show on their walls. So thank you for that. Uh, Adam has been on a Slimming World diet. When did you start? 
I started back in January, mid-January. In January, you were weighing then how much? Uh, 19 stone 7. 19 stone 7. OK, take yes. it away, Adam. And now uh, we are one pound away uh, from two stone and two and a half, two, two and a half stone. Da, 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 da. He has lost two and a half stone. How fantastic is that? Yeah, one, one pound away from two and a half stone, which will come and in you're, next week. You're now hopefully. one pound away from your target, aren't you? Yes, I'm one pound away from my uh, target for two and a half stone. And then we work towards the, uh, the three stone mark. Oh, you you want to go further? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going down. I'm going. I'm going down to uh, twelve stone. Well, you're you're going to be lighter than 12, me. 12, 12. Yep, twelve or thirteen stone. I want to go to thirteen. Realistically, twelve would be nice. You're going to be lighter than me, Adam. I will be. Excellent news, and I, mate. I, I have a, I have a present a present winging its way to you to adorn your fridge. A gift, a little gift for hey. me. A little gift for you, yeah. Oh, what could this be? Oh, hang on a minute. Well, Do you know what I've got here? I completely forgot about this. Because, of course, we've had Lent and I couldn't eat chocolate at Lent. I've still got your chocolate, your Slimming World chocolates you bought for me here. Look. I've right. forgotten about those. Do, do, Look. Do, do, do try one live on air. What, now? Yes, and see what you think. Give the viewers your honest opinion well, of I the Slimming any... World All right, bars. hang on. Let's, let's try... This one's open, so I've already had one of these. But <laughs> yep, it's been so long, I can't ago. remember what they tasted like. So I'll have one of these. Now, here we okay. are. We have a Devour Me Double Choc Crisp. OK, Double Choc Crisp. Mm -hmm. And these are, how many calories are they? Oh, I can't see. Just a minute, dear. <laughs> remember, we don't work on calories. We work on sim values. Oh, yeah, we work on sim values, don't we? Sim so... values, yes. Have you not been studying your book, Mr. Reardon? 293, oh, 70 calories. No, I haven't. I haven't opened a book yet. I'm still trying to get through this brain tumour thing. <laughs> the brain tumour. Oh, you, did, you might have been cut off then. I'm reading this book about this I'm bloke with a brain tumour. Um, yes, I, know, I, got, I caught the end of that, yeah. I can't eat this now, darling. Not before my dinner, love. You can. It's only a little snack. Oh, I shouldn't Thank really. you. I'll have a little bite. OK. The Go double have, chop. A, have a nibble. Have a nibble on my end. Only 70 calories, this. Wait a minute. Oh. It's lovely. Toffee texture, mm -hmm. very chocolatey. Yep. Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Good. Glad you like it. Have got those have that got raisins yeah, in there. it as well? Is there raisins? Much... Is there raisins? Have you gone, dear? No, no, I'm still here. I'm Is there here. raisins? Not that I'm aware of, no, not that I'm aware of. No raisins. Oh, that's delicious. I'm going to recover that and I'll have that for my pudding. Yeah, Instead gonna, um, of Angel hopefully, Delight. Um, hopefully my uh, my tutor, Maria, yeah. is uh, watching the show. She had the show with her earlier. So Who is that, I Maria? She's watching. But it's Maria. Maria is my uh, teacher. Maria. Uh, I just met a girl named Maria. That's on the karaoke if you want to have a go at that one, dear. I, you, I, you could, I could have a go at that one, yes. But she's, uh, she's given me all the guidance and all the help along with the... The rest of the group, right? And, yes. Um, I've just put myself down for the uh, social team on our, our Slimming World Club side. So they oh, have to right. meet and greet and help other people go on their journey towards yes. the slimmer to fitter them. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's just said there's no phone number up. Ah, yes, but Adam's a regular caller, so he's got it on the on his fast. Re I do hope I'm at the top of your favourite list, there, Adam. You are. You are. I don't want to be number two or three, dear. I now go round and... Top... Go on. Yeah, you are at the top of my favourites list on my on my iPhone 7 Plus. I do check people's phones, you know. If I'm, I, know I, you... I say to them, excuse me, am I on your favourite call number list on your iPhone? And they say yes. And I'm like, can I look at it, please? And if I'm not at the top, I delete it. I delete the number. And they you, like... You haven't, you haven't seen my shrine to you, have you? And, and you know that you're my wallpaper on my shrine. phone as well. I like yes, we that. We have the Chris Reardon Shrine. You know, like certain people have a Barry Manilow Shrine. Yes. Who was? Oh, this that's show. The, that's our lovely Anne Anne Taplin. Yes. Well, I have a Chris Reardon Shrine. Do you have a shrine? I do. Pictures I like that. Is it pictures is it, from the days when we were at certain nightclubs together? Is it like the Alsford Priory? That is a shrine. Have you been there, Alsford Priory? No, I haven't. No. And I do have this. I do have this this figure in the middle. 
um, which which we re- refer to as the Chris Reardon statue. Oh, I like that. Unfortunately, it would have cost too much to get one sculpted as yourself, so we had to use Buddha. It was the closest we could find. I quite like that, though, having a shrine. Because at the Alsford Priory, that's and, and there's like a shrine to Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I quite like myself like that, perhaps surrounded by little plants and roses beaming out, you know, things like that. Perhaps I could have a rose named <coughs> after me like Princess Diana did, although I do hope not to die in a car crash like that. No, no, indeed. Um, but then, I, think, then... I, th- I think Chris Reed and Rose, what you... Yes, let's let's have a Christmas. Well, you know, I've written to Parliament about um, getting you a twenty-four hour show. You know, have I'll you put really? You on a petition. I don't know if I could talk for twenty. Well, I don't know. Maybe I could. Well, we can have pre. We can have pre-recorded shows in between. Pre-recorded, got... dear. We're taking well, we a step back enough, a couple I mean, of years with that, lovey. New new viewers would have eleven years worth of shows to catch up on. Yes, including such great classics as the spaceship in Chris's back garden. <laughs> Oh, the is distru- that where I showed you how to make a comet? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> comet Isis, I think you called comet it. Comet Isis was. <laughs> <laughs> you had Comet Isis and such great other values like how to get a teenager out of bed. Oh yes, from my nephew Jimmy Butler International. Yes, and and then there was also great classics like how to repair a puncture on your bike. <laughs> <laughs> How can you remember all these things? Are they like little little pictures of my show that you've displayed all around my statue? That's it, yes, that's right, yes. They're all there as well. And then there was the one with your best friend Ronnie, spelt with an I-E. Yes. Um, not with a Y. Um, making a bed, which yeah. took nearly nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> How to make, how to make a bed easily? Yeah, we need to do. Do you know what? You're reminding me, and, of course. And cooking shows, of course. Since since we started doing the show, lies we can't really <coughs> do those. I can, there's nothing wrong with. Sh- <coughs> well, as you well know, I shove in a recorded show now and again. Mm-hmm. So we must. I must start doing things like that again. I think. Yes, I think we need to once the, once the warmer weather comes, we need to get outside and. Doing exercises with Chris. Yes. Could be one. Tell me, when, you know, when, when it's warmer weather, do you sort yeah. of hose down my statue and give it a good old polish, do you, lovey? I do, I do, yes. I give the tummy a little rub and give it a clean, you know. As I say, we, we couldn't get um, a sculpted one of Chris Reardon because it was just too much in, in the marble materials, you know, yeah. oh. the cost of marble. Oh, what's um, it made so out we, of then? So, we, so we, had to, we had to opt for Buddha. It was the closest match. A Buddha? Yes, we've we've used Buddha as it's the closest match we could get. Why a Buddha? Well, you I'm know, not quite that fat, am I? Stunning, stunning to look at. What Buddhas? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's not really my religion. I mean, maybe maybe you should take down that statue and put up a good old cross and nail me to that. That would be more representative of me, wouldn't it? Yeah, we could do. We could do. How about? A live crucifixion of the show, yes, dear. Come, yes, you could come around and we could nail you up. I, I don't know if I want real nails used, though, really. Well, we'll Maybe use, if you we'll could use... We'll use no, we'll use no nails. Ga- let's gaffer tape. Gaffer tape. Let's be me modern. Gaffer, gaffer tape. tape. Yes, gaffer, gaffer tape fixes everything. Gaffer tape. Now, show, which, which way do you want my head to be held? Show 969, that was. Sorry. <laughs> 101 Uses for Gaffer Tape by Chris Reardon. I love it. That's another show. Another show in its entirety, Adam. See, we, we, we have at least another 200 years of shows. Oh, marvellous, dear. That, Marvelous. Now, here's, you, here's, here's a competition time. There's no prizes, but it's just for fun. Just for fun, what yes. Is one of, what is one of Chris's favourite sayings? There we Answers go. Answers now. What is one of my favourite sayings? Type up your answers on there now quickly. I don't even know yep. what my favourite sayings are, to be honest. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> you no, know, that's one of your favourite noises, which are incontrollably just come out any time because you don't actually know you're doing them. No, I don't. You know I do it in the car on my own. Yeah, I know. You I talk to myself in the car. Times. You when I'm driving... Three o'clock in the morning, your phone's up and goes... When I'm Most driving... disconcerting. When I'm flying my spaceship home, I do talk to it yep. like a spaceship. You know, warp five, warp five now. <laughs> I do. I talk to it like a spaceship when I'm sitting on my own in my vehicle, in my spaceship. 
in your spaceship. My, my nephew, Jimmy Butler Toyota. International, he informs me that my spaceship was the first spaceship he's worked on, usually just as cars. Mine is the I first must, spaceship he worked on. I must send you a clip that yes. reminds me. I must send you a clip of how to take out um, any little dents or dings in your car using a um, an object, which we can't say at this time of the day because it's a, it's a, it's a children-friendly show. So I will send it to you in a private link. Oh, please do. You, you mean to say I've paid him for nothing? Yeah, you could have used an, an, an everyday object you would have to take it out. Oh, well, send that to me privately, and I will, of course, study it carefully before I broadcast it on this family favourite show. Indeed. I think you will need a sensor over the, the item that is used. <laughs> on the Thank you very much, Adam. It's a pleasure, as always, to talk to you. And go and, and polish my shrine let's now. Let's see who I gets this question right for this prize of an oh, evening yes. out with Chris Reardon at some fancy restaurant. And all you have to do is pay for everything. Chris will not pay for it. You just have to pay for everything. Chris will just literally turn up and grace his presence with you. That's ideal. That's that? what I do. Just invite me round to a nice vegetarian dinner. Beans on toast is fine. Beans okay, on toast is fine. That's fine by me. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Chris. Have a good day. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Polish my shrine for me. I can't be having a dirty shrine, dear. No, we won't. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> there we are. Adam the plumber calling in for you there, boys and girls. Um, Chris says, stop trying to sound so posh answering callers. You're not on the BBC in 1952. Do I sound posh when I'm answering callers? Do I really? I don't mean to. I'm be sounding posh, dear. Um, Chris says, also, you could talk for 24 hours. I think I could, Chris, to be honest. I think I could. I might get a bit tired. When would I eat my cheese and onion crisps sponsored by Walkers? Exactly. Um, uh, here's, here's some of my sayings. Chris says, I am unanimous in that, which I am. It's not really one of my sayings, is it? That, that saying is from Mrs Slocum and her pussy on Are You Being Served? Going up. Da, 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 da. There, are they all dead now on that programme? I think they are, aren't they? Oh, such wonderful TV programmes, weren't they, in the 70s? Uh, Dennis says, one of your sayings is dear. I don't remember saying dear, dear, did I? And uh, Chris says that was a funny clip as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so there we are. Good. Right, we're going to do uh, today's birthdays, boys and girls. Then we're going to disappear, all right? Happy birthday today to... Tamkin Riaz, I think I've said that name right, 57 years old today, little, just a tiny bit older than me, happy birthday Tamkin, uh, Jill Round, happy birthday Jill, happy birthday Mickey Austin, 51 years old today, you look so lovely as a cat, you really do on your, on your Facebook profile picture, Ben Thompson today is 29 years old, happy birthday Tom, uh, John Davidson, 51 today, younger than me, happy birthday John, Mark Lewinsky is 30 years old today. Thomas Gardner. Hello, Thomas. Been so long, my friend. Happy birthday to you, Thomas. How old are you now? You, have you got to about, you must be about 28 now. 26, 28, something like that. Maybe 25. Somewhere between 25 and 28. Happy birthday, Thomas. Uh, are you still with your lovely lady? Beautiful, um, beautiful lady he's got. Uh, happy birthday today to Robert Mussy Cowley. Just a minute, boys and girls. Good morning, Ron. Best friend Ron has just called in on here. Can I call you back? I'm nearly finished. Nearly finished. I'll call you back when you're done, yes. yes, I won't be long. All right. Cheerio. Best friend Ron sending in a, a, a FaceTime there. Uh, yes, Robert Mussey Cowley is 29 years old today. I worked with him uh, for a while. He's a lovely chap, he is. Remember the sausage rolls, Robert? Remember that sausage roll that you kept telling me about? Have you, have you been there again recently, I wonder? Uh, Bertie. Fotheringay. I, well, I, lo- I love your surname. I love your surname. Fotheringay. Fothering Hay. Fothering Hay. Fothering Hay. Yes. Bertie Fothering Hay, 50 today. Luita Torbeso is 33 today. John Hicks, who runs radio stations, and I've been on a couple of them. Happy birthday to you, John. I hope all your radio stuff's going very well, sir. Uh, Mark. Have I done you, Mark? I've done you, haven't I done you already? Oh, yes, I've done you already, Mark. Oh, you've got two profiles, Mark. Even I, I've only got one. I can only afford one myself. Uh, Eric Mitchell, happy birthday. Tim Lee. Tim Lee, happy birthday, Tim. And Sonia B. Hagen, they're all the birthdays today. I'd also like to wish a happy birthday for yesterday to great niece 
Evie. We didn't do a show yesterday, so we didn't do the jo uh, shows. She is five years old. Chris Reardon. She calls me Chris Reardon. Chris Reardon. Chris Reardon. Happy birthday, Evie. Uncle Chris is going to come and hold your hand very, very soon when we go away on our holiday in a couple of weeks. I'm going on holiday with my nephew uh, and his wife and his three children, Evie, Harry and Olivia, in a couple of weeks' time. I think that Olivia's um, carer will be coming as well. Um, so that'd be quite nice. I went on holiday with them last year and I had a blast of a time. A blast of a time. Let me tell you, um, it's so much, perhaps it's a thing as you get older, it's so much more fun going on holidays with little children, as in little, you know, five. I mean, probably up to the age of about 11, I would guess. Then they start getting a bit of attitude, don't they? <laughs> Mind you, some of them have already. George, who is my niece's son, told me that I was annoying him the other day. Chris, why are you annoying me? He's four. I was annoying him. Can you believe that I would annoy someone? I find that very hard to believe. I'm sorry. Anyway, happy birthday to all of you. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To all of you. There's my advice. You're going on holiday and you're sort of over, um, over 45 years old. Make sure you take children or go with your family, nieces or, you know, nephews, anything like that. You will have so much of a better time rather than going on your own. You really will. Anyway, that's it for the show today. Uh, tonight, I'll be doing some uh, DJing tonight, boys and girls. That's at the Two Brewers in Clapham. All right, DJing tonight at the Two Brewers in Clapham. And there'll be a show on as well at uh, midnight. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening today. I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy your Thursday. Cheerio now. Thank you.